Today we're gonna talk about ultimate or nominal flexural moments in beams, of course. We'll talk about beams. Right. So last class we've we've seen this figure, this diagram a lot, huh? So the the previous one we talked about or the first lecture we talked about M crack. And last class we talked about M service and now we're talking about M yielding, where the steel reinforcement bars has have been yielded. And the concrete is crushed. So what's happening here? Right. So when failure occurs, concrete is crushed from the top. Okay. And tensile cracks move upward as does the neutral axis. You see the neutral axis is here. It used to be here in the middle. Now it's moving up because all of the stresses are taken, the tension stresses are taken by the steel. So the steel is taking up the place from concrete. And you can see how the cracks are moving or are showing in this figure. And the concrete is here totally crushed. There is no concrete anymore. It's the steel who's taking, up, taking care of the, of the forces. Now, the compressive strength moves, moves from the straight line into curve. Can we see this? Look. From here, we used to draw the stress and strain, I mean the stress and, and, and compression and the strain and tension as straight lines. But here, you can see that it is changed to non-linear. Because, why is that? Because here we are talking about the non-linear stage. If you remember with me, the co compressive strength or the concrete, the concrete um, diagram goes elastic or linear and then it turns into non-elastic. We've covered with the previous classes this part. And now we're talking about this part, which is the non-elastic, which is the same, the curve is the same here actually. Same same shape. That means the concrete is now is crushed, non-linear, and the tensile stresses are yielded. Alright, so Actually, in design, also the steel. Steel, what, what do you mean by steel is yielded? The reinforcement bars, I'm gonna show you quickly here. We have a stress strain diagram of steel. We all know that steel goes like that. And then the first part or the previous classes, the steel were here. It's elastic stage, right? But now when it reaches its yielding, this is the yielding. Now the, the steel, is actually it's not elastic anymore it's the, and it's moving I mean this is where we design our structure for yielding point right that's why that's why in our in our design actually we assume that this the let's let me choose another color we assume that this, the stress train diagram of steel is like that. Elastic, then plastic, straight line. Elastic, plastic. Because we, we, only, we only do the computation and the design is based on the yielding. So we assume this is just a straight line. Nobody do the, any design for the ultimate or for ultimate uh, strength of steel. Okay, so moving forward, Let's see what we have next. Okay, so we've talked about this, right? And now we're gonna see what does it mean here in reality. Now we have this, as we talked about, we have this stress strain diagram and we, we've seen that it is non-linear anymore as shown here, right? But one of the scientists it converted it from non-linear as it's shown here to approximate equivalent um, shape that is almost rectangular something that we can use to compute so here it is shown here that's the compression C is referred to the compression of concrete tension for equilibrium we always do T tension equals compression and the tension force is the area of steel multiplied by the yielding uh, strength of the of the material the compressive uh, force is also the fc prime 
of the section multiplies by a which is this distance from here to here and multiply by b which is this one all right and it is 0 0.85 because we said it's equivalent to the nonlinear. the distance between the two couples c and t is d minus a over 2 you know as we know that if we have couple moment this this is if, if this is called couple moment from statics if we have couple moment then we can calculate the moment and we can know what is the nominal uh, flexural moment so the moment is what moment is force times distance isn't it moment mn is force times distance so here if we take the moment around the tension if we take it here then it's the C multiplied by D minus A over 2. C multiplied by D minus A over 2. Or, or it is actually MN equals to because of the equilibrium. If you take the moment around the C here, here exactly, then it is actually T multiplied by D minus A over 2. Okay, so let's take examples. This is what we call the moment, which is the nominal flexural moment. It's the nonlinear part of it now. And as we said, it is the design stage actually, where we design our beams for. Nobody designed for service. We check the deflection for service, but we don't design for it. Okay, so let's take, let's take these examples. We have two beams. Okay, one I will solve it in the one I will solve it in the SI in the SI unit and the other one with the US customary. Starting with the US customary, let's assume that we have the following dimensions. We have here D is 21 inch, right? And we have the cover is a 3 inch. Okay. Uh, B, let's take it 14. 14 inch. The area of a steel is 3 inches square because we have 3 bars of, uh, three, 3 numbers of bar 19. 19 diameters or 19, not diameters, 19 inch. Okay. It is required to determine the nominal or theoretical ultimate moment strength of the beam. If we have FC prime is equals to, uh, let's take it 3000 PSI and FY, which is the, we used to say FS, now it's FY, yielding, is 60,000 PSI. What's MN? Now, in order to solve them, and we need to find T or C, any of these, and we need to find D, which is the distance between T and C, minus A over 2, in order to find the moment. Now, we always start with this. T equals C, the equilibrium. What is T? It's the area of steel multiplied by Fy, which is equals to C. What is C? It's 0 0.85 multiplied by um, FC prime let's so just write it FC prime multiply by A multiply by B okay AS is 3 multiply by uh, 60 60,000 so 60k equals to 0 0.85 multiplied by 3 multiplied by a we don't know what's a but we know b if you solve it then you will do the math if you you will find a equal to 5.04 inch okay so we came to know where is what is e what is a sorry so now we know what's d so what is left nothing i will just say m n is t you can put C as well, multiplied by D minus A over 2. 
Okay. So what's a over two? Uh, sorry, what's t? A s times so this one, which is one eighty, multiplied by d, which is twenty one, minus five point zero four over two. This gives me three three two six yeah point four inch k or if you want to put it in different twenty two two hundred seventy seven point two k foot that's it simple as that that's the nominal moment all right so let's do the other other example here if we have d is and purposely i did it i so I'm, I'm trying to solve an si because i don't want to because here i want you guys to try to solve in both units 430 mm right this is a the cover is 70 mm and here it's 300 mm okay Take FC prime as 28, right? 28 megapascals, which is not much actually, it's normal. And take the yielding strength as 420, which is the nominal or the normal. Normally you will find always the guys specify 420 for yielding. Determine what's the nominal moment strength, right? Same procedure, T equals C. AS, which is from here, AS multiplied by FY, which is 420, should equal to 0 0.85, multiply by 28, multiply by A, we don't know what's A, multiply by B. If you do the math, then A is, um, how much is that? 90. 90 mm, okay. Since we get A, that's it. Just try, now the moment is, again, is T times D minus A over two, which is equal to uh, T one five. Three zero multiply by four twenty. That's t. Right, multiply by d four thirty minus ninety over two. Then that should give me uh, two point four seven times ten power negative. No, sorry, ten power eight newton millimeter. Now we don't really read these figures, so we have to convert it into something that is logical. So we convert it into 247 kilonewton meters. So this is it. Actually, you can solve it also by multiplying it by C. Instead of using T, you can put C, as I said. You get the same, you get the same result. This is the end of this video, hope you enjoyed. This is actually will take us to the design stage. Or well, before design, we have to introduce some terms which are important to designing and guidelines. And then we can straight away go to designing. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you.